Hello and welcome to Let's Talk. This is Keisha here. As you come on in, hit subscribe and share this message out. If you're watching from another platform, make sure you're going over to YouTube at Keisha Taylor and subscribe and share this message out. So I thank you for all your support in watching my videos each week and also those of you that share the message out and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you. So as you know, this channel is about exposing unhealthy thoughts and replacing them with healthy ones. And my messages are pretty simple and they're about our everyday thinking, the things that we don't say out loud, um, some of the things that we struggle with in silence or in private, and the the thought processes that we have that um, basically undergirds our emotions and our choices and um, the decisions that we make and how we interact with others, um, our triggers that we have, um, as well as our pains that we've suffered um, that create a certain mindset or thought process that we now own today and we walk around with and live with every day. So that's what this channel is about. As you know, I'm also the author of the book, Overcoming the Hand You Were Dealt, which just pretty much tells my story um, and the, the struggles and the overcoming that I've had to do um, through the course of my life um, to be whole, right? And I guess um, that's always a work in progress, you know? Um, but today, what I had on my heart was more about um, just kind of the things that are going on around us, right? And it's more of a thinking feeling of what's going on around us. We see the reality of what's going on, right? But how are we filtering our feelings and our thoughts about what we're experiencing? I have... Um, you know, a few examples of, you know, handling challenging times, um, handling things that we just want to bury and that we just kind of adapt to our new normal and sometimes not really, um, I guess, purge that thing out or um, work on healing things um, that bother us. Um, at deep levels. I kind of want to talk a little bit about that. And um, I'm, I have two stories that I, I want to share, but one impacted me recently um, the other day. And it was um, a gentleman who I came in contact with who had just come home from prison. He had done seven years in prison um, and he had just come home. And he had such a kind of a aggressive demeanor about him, but you can also tell um, that he had a, a, a pain or an emotion of confusion and trying to adjust at the same time that he perceived the world to be something different, right? When he returned to it and um, and in talking to him, right? You know, he said, people are so mean. Like, I mean, people are so rude and, and mean. Everywhere I go, I'm encountering people that are rude and mean. And I was, you know, kind of trying to share with him that there's a lot of tension, you know, going on right now with the things that are going on in the world. There's a lot of um, people that are on edge um, due to COVID and, you know, other things and you know, I was kind of trying to share those things with him and he was just really having a hard time, you know, adjusting. And one of the things that I found myself saying to him after he he said um, he said something to the effect of, you know, people share or say that they're going to, you know, do one thing and, and they, they don't do it. And I'm not I'm not used to that. Right. And I said to him. The world that you left seven years ago is a different world today, right? And that just in the past few years, there has been such an injection of 
for lack of a better word, evil into the world that it is now thick in the atmosphere. And people are walking around with it, have come in contact with it, and basically now are wearing it and don't even realize it in a lot of instances. That we are feeling the emotions of our environment and our atmosphere. And in some cases, we don't know it. And for me, I try to be very sensitive to how I feel. Like um, there has been times that I, I, I felt what I call would be sad, but it wasn't really sad. It was more like a, a empty feeling, right? It wasn't sad, um, but it kind of made me think that I was feeling sad. So I was now trying to um, filter it out or reflect on it based on a sadness, right? And I couldn't really come in connection with something that I was really feeling sad about. And that's how I got to the place of you're feeling a empty feeling. And where that feeling came from is just the tension that I feel around me, just living every day, right? The tension that I feel, the um, anxiety that I feel, the confusion that I feel, the trying to adapt to this new normal that I feel from all of those around me. And I said, it it makes me feel empty because it's now bringing to light the world that we live in today and the mood of people, right? The, um, the, I would say kind of giving up on life um, that people are feeling that where do we go from here? Um, We don't feel safe. Um, We feel like, you know, we're at risk of, of, of catching, you know, this thing, you know, this pandemic thing. Um, We're feeling, um, you know, in fear of what is going to happen in the economy. We can't really travel right? Um, we're kind of also afraid of um, what, they're, what they're selling us in the supermarket and what's in the food. Um, there's just so much to that dynamic that people are almost making a departure from themselves, okay? So I, I found myself trying to share with him what he is now going to have to adjust to without losing himself at the same time. So I was sharing with him that this world is different than you know it, right? And you are going to need to quickly adjust. I'm not saying adapt to it and become it. I'm saying adjust to knowing what your surroundings are and what's in the atmosphere. It's thick in the atmosphere. It's just not one person or the other person. It's in our atmosphere. We are living it and breathing it every day right? What's going on around us and it's impacting our emotional space. And I said to him, we've been here the whole time, right? So we're feeling what you are feeling now at a high level, you know what I'm saying? Like full impact, right? Because I mean, he'd been home, I think all of 60 days, he said, you're feeling that full impact of that. And I'm only sharing this with you, brother, because I don't want to you to go back to jail, right? I see you were kind of puffed up, with a lot of negative energy based on your confusion and trying to understand what's going on in the world right now. Technology has well surpassed you, okay? In the past seven years, you can't figure out, you know, how to make the ends meet and you trying to land on your feet, you know? And he was like, yeah, I came home. I got three jobs. You know, I started a business, you know, some kind of, um, um, you know, exercise. Um, what do you call those people? Um, like a fitness instructor, you know, kind of a thing is what he was doing. He had his like flyer and his business card. He had registered his business, been home 60 days. Can commend the brother, right? However, based on what he was already carrying, he had this kind of um, tension where he felt like somebody owed him something almost, you know what I mean? And I said, no, that's not, you know, where you want to be, right? 
you want to get your head right to understand that this is a new world that you have come home to. And yes, you still have your same dreams and your goals and you want to pursue them. But what you want to make an adjustment on is how you respond or react to the tensions of this world. Because if not, you in all of your confusion and trying to figure things out are going to wind up right back in prison. And by the time that we departed, I could see like a calm in him. I could see that um, there was a new awareness that he had received um, that he might not have heard from someone else from from that perspective. And of course, I wish the brother all, you know, all the best, right? I wish him all the best. Our past mistakes do not necessarily say what our future, you know, holds for us. He could have, you know, absolutely, you did your time. Go ahead on with your life, you know what I'm saying? And make better choices going into the future. That's my take on that. So that was just kind of one story that just kind of brought the reality of someone being freshly immersed into the society that we have been living in for the past few years, right? And then also adding into it this pandemic that has been happening for the past, you know, eight months now, nine months now, right? About eight months now, right? Because I guess it started more in February, March, right? Um, that we've been living in. So the amount of tension that we are all feeling every day, right? And trying to adjust to it. One of the things that I thought about as well too is, um, and those of you, know, of you that are believers, right? Um, how it is that, you know, the enemy is, is within our midst, right? And that when the enemy is within our midst, it's, it's acted out through people, Right. So there is a, a, a energy that goes along with it. Right. When people are having things whispered in their ear and I don't don't get spooky deep on me. I'm a Christian. OK, I love the Lord. I'm saying this to you just in case you're not um, realizing the dynamic of this right here, that um, <clears throat> that the enemy uses other people. Um, to impact your life in some way, right? Um, just like God uses people to impact your life in some way as well. Um, there's energies that go along. Like if you read the scripture, it says try the spirit by the spirit. So obviously there's a connection that's an unseen connection that you have with other people and you sense it. Just like how you can sense when <clears throat> something's not right with a person, how you can sense when you go into an atmosphere and something is not right. Um, as some of you, if you, if you follow my videos, you know that I was a correction officer for many years and worked in prison. You can walk into a housing area and feel like everything is chill, you know, the regular every day, you know what I'm saying, prison life. Then there's some days that you can walk into a housing area and you feel this tension and this energy that something is about to happen, right? And when you work in that environment, you have to make sure that you are sensitive to that because there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of noise. I mean, there's yelling, there's screaming, there's laughing, there's playing, there's TV on, there's people on the phone, the showers are going, you know, all kind of stuff. People are listening to music, all kind of things are going on. So there's lots of noise around you and you have to be able to hear all of that noise as well as sense what's going on in that environment. So I give that to you to say this in this world and with the with the enemy injected in constant negativity. Right. We have this rise in brutality. We have, you know, things that we're seeing in the, in the media now that are way more graphic. Right. In our visuals. Right. And we know that our eyes and our ear gates are, you know, the windows to our heart. Right. And they create emotions. They create mindsets. They create feelings, therefore creating ultimately actions, right, of how we move and we flow in this world. So the enemy does that as well, too, with people around you, with situations, and it's in the atmosphere, and it's constantly like bubbling up and bubbling up and bubbling up. And it takes me back to, once again, you know, the story of my life, right? I think about, and it has kept me whole, right? And it has kept me loving. It has kept me peaceful. It has kept me forgiving for my whole life um, because I understand this dynamic, right? Of how the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy, right? Um, your joy, your happiness, your dreams, your goals, um, you know, your life, right? Your soul out to steal, right? Kill and destroy it. And use other people and situations and things to do it. 
And sometimes, you know, people call them generational curses. Um, like for me, I am one that um, my grandmother didn't know her father, my mother didn't know her father, and I didn't know my father, right? It gave me a stigma on not wanting to have children for many years, right? Based on that, that I didn't want a situation where I now have a child and then the man is not there, right? So those are just things that are, are built into you. I also know that um, in past history, right, with my family, the relationship with men have all been very similar, right? There was either, you know, cheating, adultery, some kind of physical abuse or, or something like that that's kind of been, you know, in that, that family line. So given this scenario, I believe that through my life, right, the, the, the enemy has tried to kill, steal, and destroy. And because God has been my guide in my life um, up to this point, anything that happened to me did not kill me, right? Um, it has made me stronger. But the biggest thing is it didn't steal my love for other people. It didn't steal my compassion for other people. It did not steal the depth of what it is that I feel and sense when I'm around other people in feeling or relating to their pain or their confusion or kind of seeing beyond the surface of what they might be experiencing in their life and want to kind of meet them where they are to assist or give some kind of um, realization to what they might be experiencing to help free them from it. So I think about my own life in that as a teenager, as a young child, and I saw, I saw a video the other day, um, you know, on social media. And apparently somewhere, whatever, in New York, they were celebrating Labor Day or whatever it is, and shots rang out. And a few people were shot. And there was a young boy that was shot. And I could see him in the video, right? And I'm going to try not to come to tears right here. I could see in the video, he, he's crying. He's laid out on the ground. His mother's trying to pick him up in her arms or whatever and carry him. Um, then she sits him back down on the ground and I could see the blood flowing out from behind him. And he's kind of like holding kind of his hip area, right? His, where his groin area, hip area is. He's holding, I could see the blood there and I could see the blood flowing out from underneath him, right? And it impacted me so why? Because as a teenager myself, um, I think I was like 13 years old. I got shot, right? And I remember it like, you know, yesterday. And I think about how it is that it's so traumatic for you as a child, right? And, you you know, living where we lived and growing up where we grew up, you have all types of experiences. And that was an experience that, that I had um, where, you know, not, not to get too lengthy in the details, but I remember I was in the building. I was... Um, I was sleeping and I woke up to like hearing like this pop, pop sound or something. Right. And I looked around or whatever. And I was like, what was that? I'm thinking, you know, something, you know, came through the window or something. And I go to get up. And when I went to get up, I just kind of felt like really dazed and dizzy. And then I felt like this really, really hot hot burning sensation in my leg but I of course still did not know what was going on so as I kind of walked forward um you know I just I I, I was like you know like what like what happened right and all of a sudden I passed out so I wake up and I'm being carried down a flight of steps right and like a tourniquet is tied around my leg and I'm being carried down a flight of steps and I'm trying to figure out like what's going on. I can see the blood is everywhere. So I'm carried out to the street um, on, you know, on the corner. And this is like Beth Stuyvesant, you know, Brooklyn, you know, to, you know, one of the big light posts or whatever. And this is back when we had like telephone booths. Right. So someone runs across the street, you know, call 911. I'm standing there on the corner. You know, my my. um my clothes is half hanging off of me at this point, right? I can see blood everywhere. And I had on a white jumper. So, you know, it is saturated in blood at this point. And I'm there on the corner and I'm all of 13 years old, as I said. Wrong place, wrong time. It is what it is. I ain't even going to get into the backstory, right? Okay. But the point is this. I'm there on the corner. I don't know what's going on. And all I can hear people saying is, she's been shot. 
she's been shot, right? So next thing you know, the cops come up. The ambulance didn't even get there yet. And the cops just threw me in the back seat of the ambulance and just rushed off, right? Rushed off to the, to the hospital. And I, I understood, of course, later that my main artery on the back side of my thigh is where the bullet entry was. And the blood was shooting out of my leg like a fountain. And I could have bled out and died right there on the street in Brooklyn, right? Similar to this child and similar to so many other children that end up in a situation like this, right? Growing up in certain environments. It's coming, but I'm pulling it back. I'm pulling it back. I'm pulling it back. Because the purpose of the story is not, you know, it, it, it's just to, to understand how things try to kill, steal, and destroy your life. I was 13, right? And the enemy was coming for me, right? To kill me, basically. And um, I get to the hospital, long short, you know, they can't do surgery. The bullet is between two nerves. It broke in half, part, with, part between my knee, the, the, the front of my knee and the back of my knee. So now if they try to remove the bullet, I'm a loose sensation in my leg and never walk again, right? So they didn't do surgery. I'm in the hospital, you know, for months and, and all of that, right? So I think about that story by itself to say how, how do you overcome that? How do you get past that? And of course, you know, there were challenges after that. I was left back in school. I had to go into like a Gates program to try to be tested. Thank God for support to be able to study and be at home and take that test that moved me to the next grade. Otherwise, I would have been left back. Right. So I was able to get through that. But then I had to learn to walk all over again. It was trying. I mean, people were calling me names. I was a teenager. Right. Peg leg, hop along, you know, all of that right there. So you're dealing with all of these different things, you know, around you in your mental and emotional state. Right. And that was an environment that I was in. Um, had no business being in, but I, I was there, right? That was my life, part of my my journey of overcoming. I was right there, okay? So I think about that. But the other thing I think about in the kill, steal, and destroy space is every relationship that I have been in, right? Every man that I have been in a relationship with has always tried to dumb me down in some way or there was some kind of cheating, infidelity, lying, some kind of emotional abuse, right? But what's innate, right, in you, that heart of love, right, that heart of compassion, that heart of support and giving and caring, it, 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 it needed to be snuffed out, right? It needed to be snuffed out. But God, right, it has never been snuffed out despite the experiences, and despite that, that, that was the case as well, too. And I think about it at different times and I say, the devil always comes for the thing, right? That's attached to who you are, right? Who your essence is of who you are. The devil comes to attack that. Would it have been nice to be in a loving, happy, caring, respectful honoring relationship. I felt that that's what I gave to every relationship that I was in. And I don't think in the sound of my voice right now, if anyone is watching this video that was ever in a relationship with me, I can't imagine. And I invite you, you could respond on this if you want to. I can't imagine any of them responding back to say that I was less than loving, caring, supportive, self-sacrificing, all of those things while I was in a relationship with you. Yet and still, for some reason, there was some level of abuse to snuff out and kill, steal, and destroy the essence of who I am. And I would not let that happen. God did not let that happen. And to this day, I don't hate men. To this day, I am still, you know, compassionate and caring and giving and sacrificing towards even strangers. OK, I am still that and I'm here on camera right now. What? Trying to expose unhealthy thoughts and replace them with healthy thoughts. Why? For the benefit of those that can hear me. Right. That can relate to me. I know that I'm not for everybody. Some people might just go right past this video. But for some people, you may listen to this video and you may get something out of it that helps you have a different mindset, help you have a different thought process. And today, what was on my heart was the energy that's in our society right now that is creating this this high level of tension. Right. That's creating this 
you know, this anger, right, that's in us, that when we are interacting with people around us now, that it's very surface, it's very matter of fact, it's very uncaring and callous. Why? Because we are having so much evil injected into the world that we're in. And I say, don't adapt to that. Don't adapt to it. Don't change who you are. And for those of you that understand what I'm talking about in the spiritual space, that we know that we need to be calling those things that be not as though they were, meaning we need to be calling out compassion, calling out unity, calling out love, calling out, you know, help and support and forgiveness and all of those things. We need to be calling those things that be not as though they were and inject them in society as our own personal light, as our own personal walk and living and experience with those who interact with us so that we can affect the change that we want even in our small circles because those small circles will turn into multiple circles that turn into big circles that turn into communities right we cannot allow these things to alter us and change us um, as we see them unfolding and i know that as we go through the next few months you know, and we end this year, there's probably going to be a lot more tensions, right? There's a lot more crazy that's going on with the people around us. And I just say this, we cannot lose ourselves, right? Like I watched that little boy in that traumatic, traumatic experience that just happened last Monday. How is that going to change his life, right? What is he going to now be thinking about his experience? Is it going to rob him of something important, that he's supposed to be or do, right? Is that experience going to hinder him? Just like I thought about all of my experiences, right? You know, being molested as a child, being shot, right? As a teenager, um, abandonment things, as well as the relationships that I have had with men, things that have tried to destroy me from the inside out, mentally and emotionally, right? But I chose to what? Forgive, and I say, I always say, I'm not going down with the ship. I'm not going down with the ship. I may love you. I may sacrifice for you. I may stay in it as long as I can because of the heart that I have. But at the same time, when I get to the point of no more, I'm not going down with the ship. An exit has to be made in order for my well-being. Why? Because I was not created by you. I was created by him. Right. So therefore, I cannot give my life to someone who is trying to destroy it. And I say try to destroy it in the sense of I believe that people are used to make these impacts in your life, to try to steal your joy, steal your dreams, steal your gift. People are used to do this. Right. So I don't blame any individual. Right. Because I already know what it is. I don't blame any individual, but I do hold them accountable in the fact that they did have a choice, right? They did have a choice. Why? Because everyone is constantly having whispers, constantly having whispers all the time, right? We have thousands of thoughts that go through our head on a daily basis. It's what we meditate on is what it is that our life then becomes. It's what we act on that is then what our life becomes. We choose to be selfish or selfless. We choose to love or we choose to lust. We choose to honor and respect or we choose to dishonor and disrespect. That is a choice that we make. So, yes, I hold each and every one of them accountable. I even hold the people accountable that, you know, molested me. I hold people accountable that shot me. I betrayed me, whatever it is. I hold them accountable, but I forgive them and I don't hold malice. Why? Because in order for me to be free to be me and not lose myself in my experiences, I have to take that position. So I implore you today, as you are hearing my voice, that do not allow yourself to be a victim of this takeover that's happening in society right now, in the emotional space, in the mental space, in the spiritual space. Hold on to who you are and who you were created to be, and don't let the experiences of what we're having right now change or alter you. So I hope that helps someone today. I kind of share from my heart and I just want to, you know, have you think about what it is that I'm saying, right? And if it impacts anyone of you, I ask that you leave a comment 
Um, if it impacted you, share this message out. As I said, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. I have a vision of where it is that I want to go with this. Your support, of course, is greatly appreciated. So subscribe, share this message out. If you're listening to a clip of this somewhere on a different platform, you know, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, go on over to um, YouTube and subscribe and share this message out even on those platforms as well. Leave a comment. Also share, give your feedback. Why? Because I believe that each one teach one and all of us are interwoven together. We are interconnected. Our experiences help one another, right? And if we just brush it off and say, ah, eh, another person just talking on social media, great. If that's where you are, no problem. But if you are hearing and you are getting some kind of um, impact from the message, I ask that you share it out because if you're getting an impact, someone else would get an impact too. And all we can do is spread our arms out as wide as we can. Social media allows us to spread even further, but it also comes through you who are watching, right? That spreads the message out further as well too. It's only but far reach that I can reach, but of course, as you reach, it of course continues further. So God bless you. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Um, if you haven't had a chance to read my book, there's so many other stories um, in this book about life um, and how to overcome different things and then remain whole within yourself in the process. So if you haven't had a chance to read it yet, you can grab a copy at mentalshiftmastery.com. Um, you can also grab a copy at amazon.com as well too. Um, but also, um, if you do get a chance to read the book and you share it with someone else, Share it with them that this is not just a story to be told. This is a life experience to hold. And if you can relate to anything in this story and it helps to impact and change your life, then pay it forward, right? Be that for someone else. Share these stories with other people. Share your stories even with other people, right? Because your stories will impact the lives of others as well too. So once again, God bless. Take care. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And make sure you like, subscribe, and share this message out. Have a blessed day. Take care.